Thank you, Pastor Morris. Thank you kindly. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We know that you would have enjoyed that very um, inspirational music that you would have heard just now. But at this time, I wish you welcome and good evening to a wonderful and insightful evening of fellowship as we speak of a topic that is sure to excite you all this afternoon. And so it is a pleasure to enjoy fellowship this evening with the Agricultural Steering Committee that falls under the ambit of the Community Services Department of Seventh-day Adventists. I am Sister Carla Watkins Bourne, a member of the Steering Committee, and we are truly happy to be here with you this evening. Um, we want to take this time to tell Pastor Ian Morris, thank you so much, as well as the members of the Pioneer Seventh-day Adventist Church. We thank you all so much for hosting us so graciously this evening. As we continue with our proceedings, we would like to invite the Vice President of the Trinidad Community Services Association, TAXA, as well as the Vice Chair of the Agricultural Steering Committee, Brother Keith Stevens, to give us an opening prayer. Okay, let's bow our heads, close our eyes. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for a blessed Sabbath day. We want to thank you for who you are, dear God, a loving and kind Heavenly Father. We want to thank you, dear God, for just being able to use us as a group. And as I place in the, to your hands this program, dear God, we ask, dear Lord, that you'll be with all the panelists, even the hosts, and even each member that is listening at this time. I place each and every one in your hands as we pay attention and closely to a very important subject. We ask, dear God, that you bless this proceedings through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. Amen. Brother Stevens, thank you very much for taking us to the throne of grace. And for those of you who are here with us, as we said, we are the Agricultural Steering Committee under the Community Services Department. And so at this time, permit me to introduce to you the, a man of God with great vision. He is the Director of Personal Ministries, as well as the Community Services Department of the South Caribbean Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. At this time, please allow me to introduce to you Pastor Nigel Walcott as he brings us greetings, as well as and give us some insight on the Agricultural Steering Committee. Pastor Walcott? Yes, uh, good afternoon all I send to all of you. A happy Sabbath. And uh, of course, I'd like to uh, thank my colleague in ministry, Pastor Ian Morris for, you know, the invite to be on the Coover platform. Pastor Morris, I want to thank you very much uh, for facilitating us on your platform um, this afternoon. I'm hoping by God's grace that by the time it gets to the feet here, uh, that the YouTube uh, situation will be uh, rectified and that persons uh, who uh, will be able to view um, in a short short. All right, uh, Sister Carla, again, thank you for your kind words. I want to say that the agriculture um, initiative is birthed out of the whole idea of the pantries, churches 
having the facility to initiate, as it were, uh, pantries in all their churches. I also um, feel, or I'm of the opinion, that the Seventh-day Adventist Church should be doing more for communities, you know? Um, we have been doing over the years a great deal, but I feel that we could really do more as a church. And as such, I, the committee and, and, and myself um, would have started probably about a year ago to talk to the whole idea of uh, pantry as was stated um, at the community services convention, pantries are not is, is, is not a new idea. Of course, it is something new that to Trinidad that we want to encourage, but it is not uh, um, solely a an idea, uh, a new idea. And of course, those talks would have led uh, to us. Um, have, after having uh, spoken to the pastor of the Berean Church and the manager of the pantry at the Berean Seventh-day Adventist Church, we thought, look, this is a great idea to have happen in our own country. Let me just say that it is important that Seventh-day Adventists get involved in preparing food, their own food. Um, that plus, as growing up as a little boy in country beach, I observed that my grandfather had a lot of cattle. He was, of course, um, involved in agriculture, planting rice in the lagoon. And uh, people counted on Brother George, as he was affectionately, uh, affectionately known, to, you know, always have something. If they needed, they would come to my grandfather's house, even though he was you know, a poor guy. The community knew Brother George. And so Seventh-day Adventists of yesteryear were known for helping people. And uh, of course, so, so that the whole idea of, of agriculture, helping members to, to, to get involved in agriculture,
and so at this time, I would like that the arbitrator can be clear that the next voice you will hear would be our moderator for the team. Thank you. Jeez. she does this in her spare time she she uh, she and her husband they both own bonds growers they sell seedlings and seeds sister Kala, she's one of our panelists next we have brother samuel ellis he hails from san guan church and i know that brother sammy he's a farmer we usually see all his crops his corn his sweet corn his tomatoes I know also that he is very, very, very active in youth ministry. So that's our second panelist. Third, we have Brother Duri Arthur. He's a businessman, a farmer. He attends the USC Church, and he's also a member of the Trinidad Adventist Community Services Association. And last and definitely not least, our our last pan, our last person of our panel. He will also be the presenter for this evening, the featured presenter. And his name is Brother Leon Granger. The church he attends, his membership is at the Coromandel SDA Church. And he is the former CEO of the Coco Company of Trinidad and Tobago. I would say that Brother Leon is also an agriculture edu educator. Now, brothers and sisters, I just want to ensure you that you will be blessed this evening because I'm on this team with these guys and I have no idea why I'm on this team, but God has placed me there because they all have experience in farming, but I guess God placed me there so that I would learn. So before we go into our panel, the next feature would be our presentation by none other than Brother Leon Granger. Please sit, listen, and be blessed. Thank you, Sister Candy Brathwith. Let me take a second off to say happy birthday to you again. And um, I've been trying to figure out what kind of fruit basket we could organize to send her. I immediately remembered um, that old adage, uh, if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach a man to fish, you feed him for life. So instead of giving her one of these beautiful um, Peter Hire fruits on my bookshelf. I think I'll organize a Peter Hire plant for her so she can start having a very own. Happy birthday again to you, sister. At this time, I'd like to share my screen. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to share. And I'll go right on to that and start the presentation. Um, just let me get myself together here. Sometimes you get the wrong thing. Slideshow, slideshow from the beginning. Yeah. 
So the title of our program, uh, Food Security Alert, let's get back to the heart of planting. In the beginning, as we know, God created Adam and together with his wife Eve, they were placed in a garden. So their first job was to tend to the garden. So they were into agriculture, right? Now, I know I can't hear you from there, but pretend you are answering me so that we're on track and we're on the same page. And I even put on that <laughs> word right so that I remember that I'm not just talking to myself here in a little room. <laughs> so their first food was fruits, grains, and seeds, right? Yep. They were forbidden from eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, but they disobeyed, right? <laughs> Yeah, this is sounding a little funny now. So there were consequences for that sin of disobedience to God's laws of health. Health laws were introduced that early year. And throughout putting this together, I was minded that there's so many bits and pieces of both texts as well as writings from our prophetess that speaks to us about health, concerns of diets and food and that kind of thing. After sin entered this world, God drove them away from the garden. And you know why, right? Yeah. To protect them from eating from the tree of life. So we don't have a tree of life that we could avail ourselves of life eternal at this time. But some things could be done. God introduced the concept of a cursed ground. And plants change their delicate ornaments to thistles and thorns. So those things were done deliberately by God to teach us lessons. In fact, when I was a student, we did an analysis of thorns. Do you know thorns are really leaves? And they're just changed and adapted to be sharp and to pierce your fingers and to remind you, ouch, it's sin that have you here. huh? Anyway, we move on. Then the diet of human beings would change. You go to Genesis 3.18. They now were to eat the herb of the field. That is when they were chased from the garden and had to do their own agriculture. The ground was now cursed and all kinds of changes took place. Evil began stalking the land. The lion was now in search of the lamb. Insects and microorganisms were now changing the delicately balanced ecosystem. And I can tell you it's extremely delicately balanced. When I did my studies on soils, I saw how just a little change in pH could cause other things to happen. It's amazing. I'll give you one quick example, and this is going off script, if you don't mind. We only have a handful of people, but it's better I leave you with more education than just stick to the, the slides I have. There is something called the acidity of the soil. It's described as the pH. There's also something called heavy metals and soils. And soils in countries that are associated with volcanic eruptions have a higher acidic content, as well as a higher heavy metal content. Do you know that there are some crops that take up heavy metals from the soil more than other crops? One such heavy metal is called cadmium. You're acquainted with cadmium. It's found in our cell phone batteries. When you eat crops that carry heavy metals, it goes to your brain. And by the time you cross 50, sometimes earlier, Alzheimer's and forgetfulness and dementia and those things step in. So we have to be careful about what kind of crops we eat. Unfortunately, there are some crops that search the soil. The word that is used in the literature is scavenge. Their roots scavenge the soil for cadmium and deliberately take it up. And the brassica family is known for that. That is cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, uh, spinach. There's the next one. Uh, Pachoy, laden with cadmium. That doesn't mean to say we'll stop eating those crops. We just have to plant them safe. Maybe plant them at home so you know exactly what soils you're putting them into. And the point I wish to point out right now is we may not be using chemicals, but some people use fertilizers, and fertilizers are laden with cadmium. I had the privilege to check because cocoa scavenges for cadmium as well. And this, the fertilizers we were using in Trinidad for cocoa 
was 136 times above the limit of the accepted level of cadmium. That's not to scare you. That's just to wake you up. Okay, so man was now in direct competition for everything that existed in the world. Climate change commenced since the fact. Don't fool yourself. Climate change started a long time ago, and all of those things have affected us. Man's diet changed from raw foods. Deforestation started because firewood was needed to cook. Are you beginning to see a whole linkage of network of consequences that came as a result of man's sin? Man can have to learn new skill sets. Uh, remember Proverbs 6.6, 6, go to the ant, consider its ways and be wise. And every day we are learning new skill sets. Although I have learned so much about agriculture, I listen attentively to Brother Ellis whenever he speaks. That man is filled with gems. I was talking to another new guy from Love Until Mr. Christmas. That guy knows some stuff. Ah, Brother Dury, important guy in the system when it comes to agriculture. I've learned to listen and learn new things. Man had to learn which insects attack food crops and which insects were useful for pollination and honey making. Do you know when we spray our fields, we kill insects that are useful? So we kill both the good and the bad. The Bible has something to say about that, uh, about the wheat. When the wheat is growing and you have weeds, it's called the tears, and, and they're so close. And he said, he instructed us, let the wheat and the tears grow together until the harvest. Well, when we try to kill the insects, we have to be careful. And honey is such an important agricultural product. It's good for healing. And uh, Brother Ivan Morris is our pioneer in the church as far as honey farming is concerned. He has a lovely apiary. I admire that gentleman. He has ideas. And we must think in, ag on, about agriculture in terms of the value chain. So when you turn, think honey, there are other more valuable products than honey. Things like royal jelly, by the way, that is sold at a $1 per gram. I'm not going to go into finances. Today's Sabbath. So just remind me every now and then I might get a little carried away. <laughs> Some insects were useful for attacking other insects. Some insects were even attacking man, right? And we have mosquitoes, you know, sandflies, wasps, ants. I specifically said bachacos because we have um, some Spanish people in our midst these days. I invited one to the program today who attends the Kunupia Church. And abejas, go check all that in your spare time. And lots of other creatures that we are afraid of. You see, uh, man has to still eat three meals a day. Well, I think it's three. Sometimes it's five. So... There's the need to study agriculture and farming, especially as Seventh-day Adventists, because we know we don't eat everything, right? I hope so. Agriculture took on a new meaning, and up to today, knowledge is still increasing. Civilization began with agriculture, and though humanity has changed significantly, agriculture still remains very important. In certain countries, its significance is more obvious, but the reality is that every country in the world depends on agriculture for one thing or another. Here are 10 reasons why agriculture is important, and I will quickly brush through these because we have so many things to talk about. Number one, it's the main source of raw materials. So whether it's cotton, to make clothes, chocolate, flour, wine, we have communion wine, wood, olive oil, all comes from agri agriculture. And raw materials are so important in production that the economic health of a country strongly depends on how many raw materials it possesses or produces. There was a time when Trinidad was a big producer of agricultural products. My father was born in 1920. He says his father used to work in a cocoa estate as an overseer. And when I check the literature, it says in 1920, Trinidad was the third highest producer of cocoa in the entire world. Today, we produce about 0.001%. So it has declined. Of course, you know why. The rich and famous product called oil. 
Number two, it's importance to international trade. By the way, I used to often tell the bureaucrats, if you don't divest and if you don't reinvest into agriculture, one day you might have to sit and, and drink the oil because we will have no food. So international trade is the second important importance of agriculture. Raw materials from agriculture make up a huge portion of what's traded internationally. Trade makes up a big portion of national revenue. Well, not for us. We, we, we hardly have a little blip in the pie for agriculture. But if you look at India, more than half of their revenue is from agriculture. Okay, we move on. Number four, agriculture provides employment. I know Trinidadians will leave here and go to Canada for a job. There are 50,000 jobs available. There's a shortage of manpower for agriculture in Canada. So they request 50,000 people to come everywhere to help them. Unfortunately, the ladies in our country look down on men who do agriculture, right? Well, some ladies. <laughs> if you're in agriculture, I, I met a young man in Tobago who said, when he's coming out of the bush, he has a bag of clothes to dress up in because he don't want the young ladies to see him dressed like a farmer. But it is a fact. Agriculture provides employment. The agricultural industry is still one of the biggest sources of employment. And in many areas, it's actually booming. Whether it's working, and I know someone might be able to pick us up on this. Every time I speak about it, people question it. ICT technicians. Technicians of farm equipment, vets, extension officers and scientists. There are many jobs available in the field of agriculture. I was mentioning recently and I was in discussion with Mr. Rudder, who went to an FAO mission and came back and said, Leon, the latest technology for inspecting farms, it's the drones. What do you think? We could recommend drones to the farmers so they don't have to walk up and down those farms. Agriculture is crucial to a country's development. Economic development is tied to a country's agriculture sector. When trade, national revenue, and employment are combined in a positive way, a country enjoys reduced poverty and its economic growth is boosted. By the way, I just want to make an offer as I'm about halfway through my presentation. Um, I came across this fruit. I, I hate the name of the fruit, really. It's known by two names. Uh, in Trinidad, they're calling it the dragon fruit. Uh, that's the fruit I have right at the back on my shelf here. If I could just take a second, reach out for one. This is rich in nutrients, extremely good for health reasons, good for diabetics, good for people with stomach problems, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. I just thought I would mention that. You know why? Today, I, I don't know how we'll do it. I'll probably ask Candy to take, or maybe Sister Carla, to take a, a screenshot of the participants right now. I would like to offer every participant a plant of the, what I call the Pitahaya. Pitahaya is the name of the plant where it originated in Peru. And I feel, this is easy to grow, by the way. And if we have any pathfinders on set right now, every pathfinder will get a plant from me free of charge. Take note of that. Please take a screenshot of the participants. There is an agriculture honor for pathfinders in cactus. And this plant is a cactus. So I'll contribute the first one. So there'll be some rules that will allow you to, to, to get my promise. One of it will be that you'll have to participate in the honor of getting your agriculture on a call um, cactus, right? So we move on. I know this is a little bit heavy for you on a Saturday evening and it's a hot evening, but number six, agriculture heals the environment. Anytime you practice good agriculture, you're helping to heal Mother Earth. Okay? Number seven, agriculture goes hand in hand with war. Whenever there's an outbreak of war, or any kind of worldwide thing, like a pandemic, by the way, pan mean worldwide. People, a lot of people didn't realize where that word came from, like panorama and pandemic. Anytime there is a world war, 
or even uh, an isolated war. Agriculture kicks in immediately. You know why? Every one of those soldiers has to get food. And all the ports are blocked so that within your country you may not get food. There's poverty, there's starvation, there's hunger. All kinds of things like that will kick in. Agriculture is such an important part of a country's infrastructure. It will impact conflicts and wars. Throughout history, the need for land to grow food fueled many conflicts. Importance number eight, agriculture is the source of our food supply. Need I say more? A lot of people eat and don't realize where it comes from. You know, I remember a lecturer from the UN when I was a student, he said, why don't you all just tell the children milk comes in a can from a country called Denmark? Because people were not interested back in the 70s in doing agriculture. They were interested in going to the oil fields. But agriculture is the source of our, of our food supply. By the way, I did a search on E.G. White writings, and I came across 250 excerpts where she wrote about agriculture and its influence on man's heart. Remember, human beings were put in the garden. They ate the fruit that they were told not to eat, they disobeyed. Sin started. Everything changed. Thorns and thistles. Things became our enemies. We were no longer at peace. We could even grow a crop without it rebelling. The crop itself would rebel. And she says that there are lessons to be learned in agriculture that is going to help man and his heart. It helps to soften his heart. That's the kind of psychosocial benefits. And it also helps him to understand his fellow human beings and what salvation is really about. So arguably the most important aspect of agriculture is that it's source of the world's food supply no matter where or what you are eating, the ingredients in your meals came from agriculture. All roads, you say, lead to agriculture. Number nine, agriculture drives tech in innovation. That's your, that's your drone flying over the field, taking pictures and doing inspections. Could you imagine you have an orchard field? Brother Dury, 100 acres of various fruits, and you want to see which one is bearing. You can't go walking through that field. You could send a drone. And that is what innovation is doing. Okay. So there you see it. Through artificial intelligence, blockchain software, plant breeding, scientists and farmers have been figuring out ways to increase crop productivity, use less water, and reduce negative impacts on the environment. In Israel, in the desert, they're growing crops. They're now doing mangoes, huge amount of vegetables. They're doing avocados. We feel they might do cocoa soon. So it's just using technology. It's all that God has endowed us with, that, that mental capacity to think things through and to solve problems. And... Importance number 10, the state of agriculture reflects our future. I don't know, but this one could be about the most important one. Look at that section of the picture on the left. The state of agriculture reflects our future. What kind of future we want? When it comes to pollution and climate change, both the environment and agriculture suffer the quickest and with the most clear consequences. If effective changes aren't made, climate change impact on agriculture will decimate a country's economy and eventually wipe out the food supply. They're speaking to biodiversity. And that's what I like about Brother Dury's plan. He doesn't want to plant a monocrop. He wants to go into multi-cropping. So here's looking at agriculture. How is humanity going to end up? Let me see if I could unblock my screen to get a better idea about where humanity is going to end up. Look at agriculture. Maybe we need to also look at ourselves. What are we doing to contribute? Right at your own home. Even if you are able to do some agriculture in a box if you didn't have a yard. How about suspending from your ceiling, from your porch, 
from the back of your house. There's something called vertical farming. There's just so much to talk about, but I only have 30 minutes, right? And time is run out on me here. So what's being done? What is being done to adapt dwindling homegrown healthy food? What will our food supply look like in the future? The state of agriculture is a good litmus test of what we can expect the future to look like. And might I also add, what about when we have to flee to the mountains? I know supermarkets up there and green grocer to go to and get two cucumbers, two tomatoes, a bunch of lettuce and a, a bundle of body. You, know. you have to figure out what to harvest from the forest and eat. You might have to even eat it raw because you wouldn't want to give away your location by lighting a fire, right? Things you learn in Pathfinder and things you learn as master guides. What's needed? I'll tell you what we need. A strategic plan for community development. This is about building communities. This is about empowering communities. This is about becoming sustainable in communities. This is probably about exchanging what you can do best in your community. If you grow rice best, maybe you exchange your rice with someone who is doing corn or with someone who is doing pita hire. Oh, by the way, do you know that corn and, and maybe rice, rice beats back corn, has the highest usage of pesticides for growing a crop? It's amazing. Some of these crops we don't know about, but we eat every day and we get sick and we don't know why. So here are a few suggestions. If you have a backyard, plant directly. Plant a few veggies. Plant tomato, lettuce, cucumber, bodhi, squash, spinach, dashin. Oh, I bought a dashin and forgot it in a bag and realized it's growing. So tomorrow, for Father's Day, I plan to cut off the top and plant it in a bucket I have there. Yep, you could plant dashin in a bucket. You could plant yam in a bucket. Edos, lettuce, um, cabbage. Chadobani, pimento, okra. You have no backyard? Recycle a container. Use grow boxes, five-gallon plant bags, just those plastic bags, a garbage bag, just fill it up with soil and plant. Put a stick to help you hold up the plant. Okay? Juice packs, old fridges, oil drums. Can you recognize this plant, Brother Ellis? If you recognize this plant, Brother Ellis, I'll give you a, a pita hire too. <laughs> Sometimes seedlings are difficult to recognize, but I just threw it in there for, in case that we have pathfinders looking, they could try to figure out what is that. You could figure out this one, it's a potted cabbage. In one pot, a nice cabbage, healthy. You could even cover it with a net if moths come in to lay in it. You don't have to spray it. Cauliflower. Yeah, cauliflower is a flower, by the way. I don't know if you realize that we eat flowers. Cauliflower. Do you know any other flower that is eaten, by the way, just to wake you up on this Sabbath evening? Any other flower? I don't know if I'll see my screen if anyone is texting, but think of it. There are other flowers we eat. What about flowers we use in making drinks? These used to be my favorite questions when I teach pathfinders. Do you know of any spices that, that are actually flowers? There's a lovely sample of that tree I know in Blanche shares. Brother Isaac has one. It's clove. Clove is a flower. And it drop from the trees, you dry them, and that's the clove you buy in the shop. I was asking people if anybody know where I could find a morbi tree. Yeah, morbi comes from trees. It's a bark. But just to get our pathfinders thinking, sometimes... I remember teaching pathfinders and asking, do you know which is the sweetest grass in the world? I wish I could see hands going up. The sweetest grass in the world, of course, is sugar cane. And then I'd ask them about the tallest grass in the world. The tallest grass in the world is bamboo. And then there are grasses we eat in the morning for cereals. Yeah, and corn will be a cereal crop and it's a grass. It's useful to, to bridge what you're teaching children to what they're actually consuming and get them to understand. Make life exciting for them. That's what children want. If you're not, if you're too boring, they don't want to listen to you, but they'll eat all the food. What is this? Anybody know what is this? I look like a, a 
butternut squash growing in a five gallon uh, paint bucket. You could do that. That's easy to do. And if you don't want uh, the chickens to go in, you just block it around with a piece of wire. These are some business ideas, and I'm minded that today's Sabbath, so I'll not go into details. But what people don't understand is the value chain. You have something very valuable, but it must be converted into that valuable final product. You become part of the value chain when you intercept it and change it. And um, I will talk later about cocoa and how you could do that, how you move cocoa from $40 per kilogram to $1,000 per kilogram. And how you can have just five acres of cocoa and make $2 million in chocolate per year. We won't go into details. Curry is the next good one. Do you know that we import all our curry ingredients? The major ingredient in curry is turmeric. 80% of that powder is turmeric powder. Uh, Chief Curry and the others, they import all the ingredients. That increases the food import bill to around eight billion dollars a year that's the extent of our import bill could you imagine if we couldn't import some ingredients during this pandemic no curry locally we have a tree called chalter i am aware from a close friend that he leaves the chalter to rot now well he could process it if he wants what is unfortunate is the businessman takes a chalter for one dollar and sell you back a bottle of it for nearly 32 dollars in between, that is where the money is made. That's your value chain. We'll talk about that in the next session. But just to mention some crops, cassava is made into farine. Talk to Brother Jensen from, from my church, from Coromandel. Talk to him about cocoa too. He's a director on the cocoa company board. Chatain, if you free chatain and, and then sell it frozen, don't sell your chatain fresh. Why? Because all the roti shops, premium roti is sold with chatain, curry chatain. Think about medicinal plants. I think we, 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 don't, we don't teach these things to our youngsters. We feel you just go to the shop and buy two whatever, Vicks and so on and so on, and you're good with that. Think about medicinal plants. When you're up in the mountains, running in the time of trouble, you think you're going to get aspirin anyway? Think again. Oh, by the way, Whenever we go in the forest, I always point out to people there's a little shrub called toilet paper. And you have to learn to know the difference between toilet paper and stinging nettle. And there's the single ply and the double ply. But you could only learn that if you get out of the church and get up and in the bush and do some serious pathfindering and master guiding. Then I spell my Peter Hire plant here as Peter Hire because I like that name. It's pronounced that way, but it's spelled differently. Aloe vera, ruku, cashew nuts. We import $5 million of cashew nuts every month in this country. Amazing, isn't it? So as the poster says, think outside the grow box. It's an initiative of the South Caribbean Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Land everywhere, but no planting. Think. I, I like the term think and grow rich. Think. World hunger. I just want to touch on this because I thought it important. It's on the rise for the fifth straight year. This is a report straight from the FAO. See these women? They're surrounded by a number of children. They're preparing one bowl of cereals. It looks like some kind of flower porridge. They're from a country called Mauritiana. That's a little island just northwest of South Africa. You remember the name of that country? Remember a boat that was that pulled up in a bell garden three weeks ago with 12 skeletons? It's from their country. That is the extent of the hunger. When they had no more food, that little family on the coastline jumped in a boat and went, and went out. They end up as skeletons in Tobago. Do you, do, do you want that to happen to our country? You have to prepare. You have to start planting something for you and teaching your children how to plant. All right? Only an initiative that multiplies a few loaves of bread would help us now. All right? God says, be prepared. 
the number of hungry people in the world increased by 10 million in 2019. And COVID-19 is making it worse. After decades of decline, hunger has increased every year since 2014. You know, there's a sustainable development goal that says they will achieve no hunger by 2030. Well, it's going backwards. It's getting worse. Hunger pandemic threatens food security. That is what we have. Hunger combined with the coronavirus and the pandemic. We're completely off track when we add to that situation what's happening, they say, in COVID. We need to change that. Three billion people cannot afford to buy food. So there, you have those who are hungry, those who don't have food, and those who can't even afford to buy food. In 2019, nearly 690 million people went hungry. I'm moving on. The pandemic is almost over, right? Wrong. The report estimates that 83 million people and possibly up to 132 million people could be pushed into hunger because of COVID-19. Brethren, I did a little bit of research on these things. First time I saw them was last week. It scares me. Many, because of job losses amid the lockdown measures, people don't have food. What are we going to do about it? Some of those persons may live right here in this country, right here in this community, right here in Coromandel and Kunupia and Aruka and Paradise Gardens, right here. Increasing healthy diet consumption is not only important for reducing chronic health conditions and non-communicable diseases, but also for reducing the negative environmental impact of the global food system. What I'm saying in short there, it's in fancy language for any audience, but what I'm saying is, as you increase the kind, the healthy diet that you should be on, you will be increasing your health. Talk to people like Sister Candy. Overhauling the global system so that it can produce healthy food to meet the world's demand will require an examination of food production, crop diversification, storage capacity, and the entire supply chain involved with getting food from field to fork. Consumers will have to change their eating habits. And if the world don't want to do it, you have to do it. You have to lead by example. You have to show your children. Not every time they ask for A, B, and C, and I wouldn't say what A, B, and C is, would you rush and give them? Because you're teaching them habits for life. And just now it will get so atrocious, you wouldn't know what to do. And God alone knows what our children are eating. If you know some of the things you're eating, you, you get scared. You'll start planting right away, making sure you have some healthy stuff. The concept of a healthy diet pays back. And the issue is how we resolve this, how we find a solution to this problem, and what we need to do. According to the gentleman there, Torero, from the FAO, he said, we need to think on how to transform substantially the food system. Thank God for Seventh-day Adventists and God's word. We're already on the right track, but we need to do some more of it. Time to restore human relations with nature and biodiversity. Sister Carla, time to restore human relations with nature and biodiversity. The time of trouble. What would happen? It wouldn't be easy. And I've entitled the slide, Warning Again. And you see in the picture there, those are quenks. You know what is a quenk? It's a wild hog. Those are the kinds you meet when you go in the forest. You will have to compete with them for food. Remember the prodigal son? He had to eat the feed from the pigs. Well, you'll have to compete with those guys when you go to the forest, and you better know what you're doing. If you flee to the forest, you will need to identify edible plants. You may need to eat raw foods. You do not want to compete with those squinks. Why wait for that time to learn? Let's do it today. Our children are spending too much time just playing games and not burning any energy. They need to go outside and plant some crops and till the soil and learn how to process those foods. Sister Candy, the time of trouble, what would, it, what would be your situation? What if you cannot buy or sell? What if the food becomes poisoned with misuse of chemicals 
and malpractices. How would you get food? All of these topics, by the way, will be expanded into modules for people to learn, even if it is online. And if there are anyone in the 25 participants who would like to share their knowledge, we welcome that. This committee, the steering committee, a very hardworking committee, doing work until it's bursting at its seams. We need your help. So Pathfinders, get back to your honors, your agricultural activities, wilderness living techniques. Think out of the grow box. Know what you eat and eat what you grow. Grow without poisonous chemicals. It can be done, brothers and sisters. It can be done. What have, what have we, the steering committee, the agriculture committee, been planning for you? Well, we have seeds and plants to give the youth. And our brother Ellis is in charge of that together with eight zonal leaders. And I think he'll talk a little bit about that later. We are thinking about agribusiness ideas. Not today. But we are thinking about agribusiness ideas. How to convert cocoa to chocolate from $1 worth to $25. Partner with a pantry initiative. That's what we are about doing. Plant veggies at home. Do branding and marketing. Learn to barter. Give me some of your corn. I give you some of my chocolates. Yeah, give me some of your body. You get some of my pitahaya. Give me some of your medicinal herbs. I'll give you some advice. Who is on the community side? I know. I am. I know that you are too. Let's get people to join this movement of being community-mindedness, of giving back to our community, of inviting a friend to plant a seed at your home and give them a seed to plant at their home too. And then when you get together and you roast that corn and you enjoy it, you invite them to a service at church. That's how we're going to win hearts. It's not easy, but it could happen. Okay? Tasca has partnered with the Agriculture Initiative. Something is missing there, but we, we are going to offer to you okra, sorrel, corn, and pigeon pea seeds. That is currently being organized. I have... Um, I have about, I think, 30 kilograms or 60 kilograms of seed. And you can see I have seeds right here. This is hyacinth beans, also known as sim. All right, 10 cocoa plants for 200 chosen people who qualify. We would mount that shortly. And Leon Granger will sponsor those plants, those cocoa plants for the church, for you to plant a little hedge of cocoa at the back of your house. And in the next module, I will explain how that could give rise to $2 million per year if we get 200 people all over Trinidad just to plant 10 trees. Get a pitahaya plant, very nutritious fruit, excellent for healing. I'm currently sourcing 200 grafted ones. I'm appealing to the church, choose someone and pay for a plant. Brother Ellis found a place where there's Plant for twenty five dollars. The other place I am sourcing from is twice the price, so we better to go for the cheaper one. I like the concept of PIE, Pi Partners in Excellence. That's what we are becoming, an entire church and community of partners in excellence, utilized in the communities for the pantry initiative. Okay, that's what we'll do with our harvest. That's the fruit. That I showed you. Sister Candy, you're going to get a plant free for your birthday. And I'm sure the other members of the committee, they're going to get you some other goodies. They said that on the chat. That's what a plant looks like. <laughs> so let's think outside the grow box, brothers and sisters. In concluding, what we're doing is centered around the pantry initiative for every church, home agriculture. Projects to be implemented over time. It's not going to happen overnight, but it starts with planting the first seed. A program of change. Each householder is a key stakeholder. Okay? Think outside the grow box. Stay tuned for more developments. Plan something today. Involve your neighbors. A lot of times we do things and we do not involve our neighbors. And then we want to invite them to church, eh? 
working along with the conference, Access to Learning and Advisory Resources. We are doing this project, brothers and sisters, without a budget. We are doing this from the goodness of our heart, our passion, and our love for people and agriculture. And we know that this is going to take us somewhere. Uh, this is the end of my presentation. I will stop here and say thanks and invite questions. I will stop my sharing so that um, the screen is available. And I turn you back over to our lovely host, Sister Candy Brathwaite. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Leon Granger, for such an insightful presentation. And you know what? What you said is correct. We need to plant. And when we plant and we have our own kitchen gardens in our homes, it even helps our own Christianity in our neighborhoods. We are, we, it's easier for us to share the gospel because we can easily go to our neighbors and offer them some fruit or vegetable that we would have planted and reaped and they would have seen the goodness of God. Uh, do we have any questions for Brother Leon? If not, we move straight into our panel this evening. Do we have questions? We can entertain two or three questions based on the presentation. However, if not, at this time, we can take the questions at the end of the panel. Do we have any questions? Okay. All right. So for our panelists, I will repeat the names again of our panelists. Sister Carla Watkins Vaughan, Brother Samuel Ellis, Brother Dury Arthur, and Brother Leon Granger. All right, good evening and welcome to the panel. The first question is, this presentation spoke to agriculture and its healing components to the land. What are the mental health and physio-social benefits of agriculture to the farmer and gardener? This question is posed to Sister Carla Watkins, Boron. Thank you very much, Sister Candy. I am um, just that. so elated to hear all that was shared by Brother Granger. I'm sitting here and just, you know, taking all the notes. It's always very insightful to hear him indeed. Um, but just as he said, while the earth has its healing properties, the, the reality of it is that we might think that we are nurturing our gardens, but it's really our gardens that are nurturing us. And so, so White would have spoken to this entire concept years before, and now the world is catching up with the Seventh-day Adventist Church as it relates to health and healing and its healing properties. Mental health is greatly affected by the fact that we need to get back to the heart of planting. We need to get back to the heart of gardening. The reality is that as we live in this present pandemic time, we are seeing that many persons are stressed out. We are, in, we are unable to do a lot as we would have liked to do. Our children are at home, and just as Brother Green just said, there's more screen time. They are very solitary, and they are just there. And everybody's frustrated. Well, let me encourage you all to get your hands dirty because it's time to get growing. When you, when you get out into your gardens, and you continue to, you get involved in planting, you get involved in doing just, I mean, a little lettuce plant, as Brother Green just said, a corn plant, whatever it may be, it doesn't have to be anything too difficult, but the reality is it has its benefits. Now, soil provides its own natural antidepressants. The research shows that there's a microbacterium that is in the soil that acts just as Prozac would act in terms of providing persons who are depressed with a feeling of normalcy. So why take Prozac when you can get out into your garden, right? Especially exactly. when you may be sitting down at home and thinking, Sister Candy, oh gosh, I'm so bored, there's nothing to do. We can't go around the savannah and exercise or go into open spaces. After a long day of screen time on Zoom for various meetings and schools, I'm encouraging you all for the sake of your health and for the sake of your happiness, get out into your garden, get something planted, water your plant. It, you, you, feel, you feel that sense of happiness. It reduces stress and improves your mood. It causes a reduction in symptoms of anxiety and depression. And now we have a lot of our children becoming depressed. A lot of them are becoming depressed. How about taking the opportunity to get out there? 
and just get planting. Plant, let them plant a pack choy. The thing about it is this, as it relates to not just the mental health side of it, but the psychosocial part of it. It allows us to connect. And Brother Granger just spoke to the biodiversity, spoke about the interrelational experiences that we can have. I, um, I can guarantee you, Sister Candy, that when you get out there and you start planting, it can also improve your familial relationships, parents and children, husbands and wives, because you are out there and you are happy, that serotonin is increased in your body, the happy hormones, as they call it. And so you are able to truly enjoy something meaningful. And while you are enjoying your mental health and wellness being improved, you are also growing something that would allow for your, your pantry or your pot to have a little meal in there. So it's very beneficial, and we need to appreciate also that the color green is useful. The color green is in everything. And when, it look, when you look at the greenery in our garden, it helps stimulate a therapeutic environment for our mind. That's what somebody in the chat said, heavenly sunshine. Yes, when we get outside and we get those vitamin D, it allows us for, it allows for holistic development, holistic happiness, and we can continue to enjoy meaningful growing experiences. Wow, Sister Carla, you blow me away with that answer. I love it. I love it. And everything you said is right off my alley. I love it. I believe in what you say. It improves our mood. It, it really yes. helps even with endorphins. It, it makes does, you yes. happier. It really does so much yes. for our family, our own health benefits. Yes. And what you said about vitamin D. And do yes. you know something? When we go outside and we go into the garden, we gain two benefits. We exercise one. That's and right. We gain the vitamin D from the sunlight as it, That's right. as it penetrates the skin and converts cholesterol into vitamin D. Powerful, Sister Carla. Thank you. Excellent. And you know yes. what? This is the knowledge and the information God's people need today. Thank you, my dear. Most definitely. Sister Carla. You know, brother, welcome. You know, brother, brother Granger, you spoke about the cocoa plant. And you, you made a, great, a very brief claim and said that each participant can get a, a, also get a cocoa plant and you'll be distributing 200 cocoa plants. Now, I heard that the cocoa in Trinidad is the best in the world. So I have a question for you, Brother Granger. Is this agriculture initiative considering cocoa and its value chain? Can you give any comments on this, please? Thank Brother you. Granger. Thank you, Sister Andy. Let me say a few things uh, that relates to the question. Most people are unaware that we have a Seventh-day Adventist member here in Trinidad who is the winner of the best cocoa in the entire world. Brother Leroy Peters of the Grand River Church and his wife, who is from Mamoral. We have other participants who are Adventists as well, Brother Jen Snazander from the Coromandel Church. And let me also say that our cocoa is the one crop for which we have total comparative advantage. It's a term used in economics. When you're considering what business to do, or what crop to plant, you consider your own comparative advantage. And for Trinidad, we have a comparative advantage with cocoa. Means compare us with any other cocoa growing countries, we have the best conditions, the best climate, the best soil, the best technology, and the best varieties. And we produce the best flavors. So that's true. So should this be part of our initiative without going into too much commercial uh, verbalization at this stage. Let me say that one of the plans that I have to still get approved from conference office, because remember, if we do a church initiative, it must be approved by conference. But so far, the steering committees seems to be listening. And, and I know there some of them still wondering, is it, is it for real? If you had 200 people with just 10 cocoa plants, that's 2,000. Under normal farming conditions, it's a high-density cocoa planting for two hectares. We have gone metric, so we say hectares. But for those who still know the imperial system, that's five acres 
five acres of cocoa will give you two million dollars worth of chocolates per year. And already I was telling Brother Dury, we have three Adventist chocolate makers in Trinidad. Brother Jensen Alexander, Brother Peter, Leroy Peters from, uh, from Grand Rivier, and Brother Howard, Stephen Howard from Aruka Church. And I think there's another one somewhere in Maruga or Rio Claro. If we develop a cooperative using these zones with these processors, you have a complete business module. Is that something I'd want to do? Certainly. Um, there are other countries asking me to come. The Cameroon wanted to employ me as soon as I retired a few months ago because they're doing a specific product with their women to increase their income. And it is exploring the value chain that allows you to do that. I would like to do that as Seventh-day Adventist church members leading the way here in Trinidad. Yes, Sister Candy. And I would also personally sponsor the plans. Let it be written. Thank you very much, Brother Granger. And, you know, I, I know the cocoa plant and one of my sisters, oldest sisters, they have two cocoa plants by their home. But I just, you know, no cocoa is you, you're driving, you go to camp, I go by my sister, you pick it and you suck it. Not really recognizing the true value and nutritious content of this fruit. All right. So I'm very impressed. And to hear that our fruit has the highest value in the world. I, I feel honored to be a Trinidadian. All right, so, you know, um, you know, I've been hearing about, because of this pandemic, I've been hearing all over the internet, a lot of persons are touting this, this, this thought about food shortage. You know, we, we are expecting this to come very shortly. And Brother Duryat, I have a question for you. How should we respond as a church? To the escalating food security challenges in our communities and in our churches. Brother Duryata. Hi, good evening, everyone. Are you hearing me clearly? Yes. Yes, we are. Thank All you. Right. I think I think we have to look at this problem from its core. Um, the challenge with food security or food insecurity is not necessarily a shortage of a shortage of food but it's a challenge with the distribution of food and the logistic or wastage of food. For another fact, there's 20, uh, 72, 72 billion pounds of food wasted every year in the US. If you look at your wow. visit to the, uh, to the restaurants, you see how much food is thrown away. Look at your own waste basket at the end of the day and see how much ends of bread is thrown away. The challenge really is an issue of wastage and and or distribution. How can a church respond to this? I believe that we have started a wonderful initiative through the community services department, through your leadership and through the astute leadership of our director, Pastor Walcott. And um, this pantry initiative in concert with uh, brother Brian, Brian Jones, uh, I, I think this initiative is one of the ways, one of the first responses we can utilize to, to, to start curbing a challenge in Trinidad we can Uberize, uh, if I should put it that way, our food network. Uh, pantry is one first mover option where uh, food can be um, organized through the pantry and then redistributed properly, uh, eliminating waste. And not just that alone, improving the network of food distribution. There are surplus foods around everyone's house. Sometimes we plant packaging, we wouldn't plant one packaging, we plant 10 packaging, but really and truly in the life cycle of the plant, the, uh, when it is harvest, you wouldn't eat all of it in one week. So that could be Uberized. We can move that uh, capacity throughout the church network through an app or through a, 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 a website that would allow people to know exactly what is available in the marketplace, where it is, and then we use the movement of our people throughout the island to redistribute the food. So if someone is coming from Salta meeting in, in, in Port of Spain, they can pick up the food from someone in Marabella and bring it up the road and distribute it. And we, at a minimal fee, we have a, a proper redistribution 
of our foods in, in using our mobilization cap capabilities and our partnership with our membership throughout the church network. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Brother Atta. Uh, what you said, I, I, you know, I really didn't think about it in that way. That it's really about wastage. And we really have a lot to waste. And recently I was driving with my kids and, you know, I saw a, a governor plum tree, it's laden, and it's close to the highway, close to where I live. And I am thinking, I hope we don't have anyone hungry in our community because there are so many fruits. Mango is in season. You know, there, there's so many fruits that's available and it's falling to the ground and it's wasting. And what are we doing with it? So is it's a question, uh, is it really a food shortage or are we not utilizing what we have correctly? All right. So uh, thank you very much, Brother Atta. Now, Brother Samuel Ellis, I'm coming to you now. With this new agriculture initiative, can this new agriculture initiative provide opportunities for the involvement in agriculture business other than planting? We want to know if all we can do is plant, Brother Ellis, or if there are other opportunities besides planting. Brother Ellis? Okay. If Brother Ellis is not on, I will allow any of my panelists to answer that question, please. Um, let me treat with it because it's, it's, um, it's something that we have been discussing. and It will probably tie back to the other questions down the, down the chain. Um, they, are, they are always peripheral industries that are tied to agriculture without having to do your fingernails at all. Um, for instance, the issue of agro-tourism, uh, just say, um, look at this one, agro-tourism is, is a big and growing industry around the world. A lot of people who are health conscious want to see where their food is grown, right? Not just that, a trip to a farm is a very exciting and, and uh, stress-relieving uh, activity. The greenery in the farm, how it's done, the methodologies, etc. Agrotourism is a business that anyone who does not know how to plant or have lands can engage in. We arrange tours to farms around the country, and uh, if they can pick people up and take them to these farms, um, have the producers share with them how the methods for farming, etc. And I think those are some of the opportunities. So there, are there are multiple others that I can also um, share later on that we can utilize as a commercial option outside of actually putting your hands in the soil. Thank you very much, Brother Atta. You know, uh, I'm happy to hear that we don't necessarily have to put our hands in soil, but you know, we know that it's very healthy, it's very therapeutic, as Sister Carla said, and this is where we need to be. But for those ladies, I guess, that don't want to get their nails dirty, there's hope for us. We can still get involved. Is Brother Ellis back in us yet? He seems to be having some difficulty, Sister Candy. Okay, thank you, Sister Carla. We'll move right along. And uh, Sister Carla, the next question is for you. Is this new agriculture initiative designed to engage also the youth and children in our churches? Sister Carla, I realize you, you're very much involved with children and this is commendable. <laughs> So do you believe that this initiative is designed to attract the children and youth of our church? Uh, well, just as you would have, um, just as you would have shared, and just as Brother Granger would have shared also, indeed it is, um, as it relates to getting our past finders involved. We are, we are not trying to reinvent the wheel, but we are going to be using and revamping things that already exist. There is the honors program in the pathfindering arm, in the pathfindering program under the youth department that we would, indefin we would definitely be partnering with them to ensure that persons get into the growing initiative, yes. So that there is room. And the thing about it is, Sister Candy, when you get children involved, when you get youth involved in planting, it gives them a sense of autonomy. It gives them a sense That's of right. pride. 
you know, they are able to realize that they can start and finish a project. I remember planting with my with my niece, and I'm telling you, she is so proud of this fat choy that's coming in this little container. And I don't know if she will eat it, but I'm sure she's very proud of what it looks like. <laughs> so we have to get her to the stage of eating it as well. And the thing about it is, Sister White, as I said, yes. Sister White spoke to the idea of and the concept of being practical and also teaching, making this thing an exciting experience for our children. She spoke to that also allowing for the openness of their mind so that they would be able to better grasp. You see, the enemy is after our strong mindedness. And when we can get involved in things that keep our minds open, keep our minds alert and keep our bodies healthy, it will only be for our benefit. So for find us, look out for more information. Master guys, you are going to be getting involved. And just to you, each and every one of us that are at home, there is something that you can do to be a part of this initiative. So remember that this evening, and you know, feel free to, to put in the chat that you would like to get involved. Put in the chat that it's time to get growing. Start to tell yourself these things. And you would be amazed that your children are just waiting on you to get started. You know, they are just waiting on you to get started. So there are going to be things that will be taking place from the U department in collaboration with the agricultural um, so agricultural committee. Sorry, and we would definitely be getting everyone involved. Amen. Thank you. And you are so correct, uh, Sister Carla. I remember right after our stakeholder consultation with Brother Granger. Uh, Brother Granger, he told us to. Plant something, plant anything in whatever you have, an orchard box, plant. Yes. And you know, my kids and I, we were on and we decided that we we're going to plant because I have some organic seeds. And I went and I planted and about a week to two weeks after, because, you know, I, it took a little while for mm -hmm. the seeds it, to sprout. It teaches patience. It teaches patience. Yeah. <laughs> Every day I went and I kept looking at it. and I, I'm watering my plants. And one day my daughter came and said, mommy, oh my God, I'm seeing the corn, I'm seeing the watermelon, I'm seeing yes. the pigeon peas. Yes. And these yes. children were so excited. They yes. are so excited about it. And you are correct. It really gives our children a sense of accomplishment. And you know yes. what? The prophet was correct. We should actually introduce our children to agriculture, going That's to the right. earth from, from, from toddler. That is what we should be doing. So you are quite correct. And I'm very excited for the children to be involved. And you know what? That's a generation for tomorrow. All right. So we definitely need to keep them very close to us, train them and teach them, guide them in the way of the Lord. Thank you, Sister Carla. All right. So our next question goes to Brother Leon Granger. Brother Granger, where can we get seeds and seedlings? for the youth to commence this planting. Sister Carla and I, we are so excited and I imagine the whole, the whole audience, online audience, the chat, I imagine what's happening. We are all excited. Where can we get seeds and seedlings to commence planting during this pandemic, considering the new regulations to stay safely at home? Brother Leon Granger, could you guide all us, right. please? Good question. Let me say that as I speak, I have something like about 60 kilograms of seeds right here with me. Um, translate that into pounds, somebody, you know, that'll be about 150 pounds of seeds. So yeah. if we were able to give, let's say, 10 seeds to a person, somebody else with the mathematical mind will know that 100 corn seeds is equal to 100 grams. So 1,000 corn seeds is a kilogram. So 30 kilograms of corn seeds will be 30,000 seeds. How many huh. youths get from that? Okay, calculate because we don't want you to take it and feed the birds. We don't want you to take it and leave it on a shelf and it rots. So next year you remember it because seeds don't last forever. But that's just to start you off. Um, might I also remind you that I made a promise to you that those of you on this set, and I took a list of the names who said, yes, I would like a cactus. I was hoping to see some pathfinders saying, yeah, I want to start the cactus on a, and get a cactus plant free that will bear me some fruits. But I didn't see that. We need to do another program for them. Um, we will have a little ceremony handover of plant material from the Ministry of Agriculture. I want to let you know that they have given us 
100% support. The permanent secretary told me, Leon, I have a box of seats on my desk. If you don't get any way in the ministry, come to my office, you'll get these. So there are some seeds available. I want to also encourage some kind of seed exchange. You have 10 corn seeds, somebody have 10 okra seeds. Exchange five okra seeds for five corn seeds. That kind of thing. You want to plant some Maruga hill rice and see how rice grows? I contact my good friend for Janine and Maruga and get some free rice seeds for you all. Just say, say what you all want. All right, and um, we'll see how we can orchestrate it. There are lots of places selling plants. I implore you to visit these plant shops and see. You might just buy um, five lettuce plants and carry it home and try it. And if you wish, um, we could set up modules where you could learn how to plant these. Ordinary. It's not difficult how to plant a vegetable plant. Forget about buying a packet of poison to spray. Forget that idea. When I did my um my postgrad studies in crop protection, the one principle I used, and it's been taught, there's a threshold level that the plant could live with. You don't have to kill the poor insect because it eats some of your food. It came there not to kill your plant, but if it reaches that threshold level, and we'll speak all about that. So the youth of the world they understand this stuff. Yes. There are plants available, Sister Candy. The seeds available. Thank you. I will drop off some for you, Sister Candy, and you'll be responsible for oh. handling the zonal leaders in South. How about that? Huh. I'm, I'm okay. addressing the last part <laughs> of the question that says, considering the COVID pandemic limitations. So if we have to decrease movement, I can assist by coming down South one morning and dropping off seeds. You handle that with your zonal leaders. I will go to uh, Brother Arthur and drop off the rest. He will handle with the zonal leaders in this side of the country. And I, everybody know where I live in Kunupia. It's exactly opposite the Kunupia Government School. Come by me, I'll give you seats. I'll probably organize with the Kunupia. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brother Granger. And you know what, folks? We are holding Brother Granger to his word. He promised us cocoa trees. Put some pitta higher and some seeds. Remember that. Remember, we are holding him to his word. So my next question to, is to Brother Duryata. Can we find a career and commercial opportunities in the agriculture food chain? Uh, the, the answer is yes. Um, there are several. I can probably just um, relate to, to five of them that I think is very easy, again, for those who don't want to dirty their hands. There are areas for uh, mentorship and training. We have a lot of uh, older farmers who are going off the scene. In addition to the fact there are a lot of trained agronomists in our church who can form business consultancies that will allow younger farmers to get involved in farming and have the guidance uh, for younger farmers and mentorship in terms of increasing yields, et cetera, uh, cropping techniques and stuff like that. So you have mentorship and training opportunities. You have IT security and accounting capable uh, opportunities. Uh, a lot of farmers are not accurate with banking and loan acquisitions. Um, they don't keep their books. Um, some very critical things, and then they may go to uh, the bank, they may go to the ATB for a loan, and it's very difficult because they have to show their numbers. So there are opportunities there for taxation, IT, even security. Um, and IT technology, as Brother Granger mentioned, drone technology. And just now, we would have that technology capability on our farms where we are using uh, softwares to monitor our crops and even to spray the crops, um, where, where we are going to be limiting the use of any uh, sort of commercial insecticide, um, mm -hmm. looking at crop health and stuff like that. So there are capabilities in IT security, surveillance cameras for farms, um, that has pre last issues. We have uh, post-harvest opportunities. You have opportunities for pre-packaging for, for uh, farm the four capabilities. Um, you have uh, supermarkets who want packaged goods for the affluent who don't necessarily go to the, the community markets. So you have opportunities there. L logistics yeah. and marketing. Uh, there are many uh, opportunities for logistics and marketing. Uh, that middleman position is where most of the profits in farming go. 
And this is something that uh, Seventh-day Adventist networks can dominate since we have a lot of uh, educated people in the rural areas and the country, we can all organize uh, that middleman capability for upstream market marketing. The other thing about it that one of the things that we have not really been paying attention to is that we tend to eat all of the dashin and yam and cassava. But I know I know most people might be aware that that agricultural starch is a very expensive uh, industry. So producing uh, processing the, the yams and the that chain for commercial for industrial starch is a very large industry that we don't use in the Caribbean here at all. Uh, but it is used in in, in um in home cleaning products. It is used for drilling. Even they combine the starches with clay for drilling. So there are opportunities downstream and upstream for um, agriculture products. And then finally, um, I think we could also look at the possibility of, of zonal cooperatives. Uh, coming together with the technical, the, the business acumen, and the the bright minds in business in the community, and uh, creating the clusters of farms. For instance, you may have a situation in Maruga and Rio Claro where pineapples and watermelons are a big industry. We can uh, dominate that market in those environments, cluster, and then redistribute those producers. Um, so collaborative uh, collaboration, sorry, is very is a big area. And then investments. There are a lot of seven advantages sitting down with, with hundreds of thousands of dollars in a bank account. You can invest that money back into agriculture, start small cooperatives, expand small farms, offer technical capabilities, and grow these businesses to dominate the food market. This is also going to help us in food security, but it is going to give us um, the 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 bring us into the forefront of the business aspect of agriculture in Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you. Yeah, Thank so you very much, Brother Atta. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, go ahead. That's, that's it. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. And you know, what you said is so correct because we, we might have farmers that they're not very acquainted with taxing and banking and keeping their book records. And once I, I was invited to, to represent a group of contractors because all they know is how to build houses for HDC and all these big contracts. But do, do they know how to keep their books and how to go to keep it in such a manner so that they can acquire loans, et cetera. And we need, and this is a means of, you know, generating jobs for the other persons within our church. So we can have farmers and these farmers are creating jobs. And um, I like the idea of the zonal cooperatives because there might be persons, as you said, they might have the monies in the bank. There might be others with the land. There might be those with a skill, some with the information. And if we come together and form these cooperatives as a people with one mind, we would be surprised how far we can go and what we can do. So I thank you very much for your very insightful answer, Brother Atta. And last but definitely not least, the last question, Sister Carla. Will there be, will there be opportunities eventually to collaborate with the SDAs in business ventures? Do you think that our Adventists can come together for these business ventures? Do you think it's possible, Carla? We, we can work this question together. <laughs> Most definitely, <laughs> Sister Candy. Most definitely. Yes. There is strength in unity. And if we are looking at appreciating all that was shared before in the presentation and the need to come together to be to return to that bartering system, to return to the whole idea of hey, let let's do this. Let us let us let us have that confidence knowing fully well that when we do it together, we will be stronger together. We would better be able yeah. to mark ourselves. We'll be able to have our place on the map. We'll be able to help our own. We'll be able to yes. reach persons in a more meaningful, professional, and dynamic way when we go down this path. So to the persons that may be thinking, what can I do as we encourage you this evening? Get growing, start planting something. And mm -hmm. trust me, the Agricultural Steering Committee is working hand in hand with our zones, 
working hand in hand with the community services department to ensure that each uh-huh. person, no one will be left behind, and that each person who is willing uh-huh. can get an opportunity to be a part. So if you check in the chat right now, you would see Brother Ellis, although he wasn't able to be in there, he will so willingly gave us his contact information so that he can be reached as it relates to gathering information for us this evening. If persons would like to, Thank those you. of you who are on YouTube as well, he placed his number there so that if you, brother, 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 um, Granger, there were persons there that asked for the picture higher plant as well. Yes, the YouTube link is hot. <laughs> Everybody there is also asking. Yes. <laughs> and so the information, once you send it to Brother Granger this evening, we will definitely be able to co- really call it everything and we'll be able to get back to you. But there is room for everyone. There is room for growth. This is a, has been a long time coming and there's no better time to start it than now. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And well said, well put together. And you know what? I just want to say to the Secretary of the Trinidad Adventist Community Services Association, Sister Stephanie Humphrey, I saw your message. She told me, Sister Carla, please keep my cactus plant. <laughs> yes, yes. She told People me. People are keep messaging it. on YouTube but as well. They want the cactus <laughs> plant and they are so happy that Brother Green yes. just spoke about this initiative. So they would they yes. are waiting to get involved. Yes. And you know what? I realized that we are not planting because we we were not, we were not well informed. But I thank God for this new initiative. God is really opening our minds because we are about to head into a new direction. We are heading closer and closer and closer to the second return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank you all for all the information. Now, Carla, I think we can entertain some questions. What do you think? We have some time and we can take, we can take some questions. Sister Carla, you are muted. Sorry, I was just saying yes. We can definitely entertain a few questions at this time. So it would be for the persons who yes. are here with us via this particular link. I will see if I may be able to connect with some yes, of the questions you. that are being asked on YouTube as well, and I can feed them to you. But it would require that I take my video off. <laughs> okay, sure. No problem. All right, so do we have a question? If you have a question, you can pose the question in the chat. And I definitely would ask the question and one of our panelists would answer you. Did anyone have a question? Well, you can put up your hand also. Candy. Let me just no. add that all those who have requested the cactus plant, we will organize a short Zoom session for them that they must attend. So they will know what to do with the baby when they get it, right? A little baby you're getting her and you had not know how to mind this baby. And the baby not easy. All right, thanks. I just thought I'd say that. <laughs> yes, thank you. And we, you know, we, we are looking forward, Brother Granger. We await your question, but we'll have conversation by the time. Brother Granger, we are awaiting the second consultation, stakeholder consultation. We are awaiting that, where we can actually teach our brothers and sisters how to take care of certain plants, how to prepare the soils, what what soils is best, what what plants best grow with certain soils, different areas. I mean, brothers and sisters, my mind is already opening because I'm on the steering committee and I listen. I'm at the feet of Brother Ellis, Brother Granger, Sister Carla. I listen to them and I'm learning. I'm learning the jargons now. All right. So we we are looking Some forward fun. to planning our second stakeholder consultation and keep 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 in touch we definitely would inform you brother granger yes there's a question on the chat how do i start planting if i have no space available to do so what other alternative do i have um i take it that when you said no space you mean no land and if that is correct if that assumption is correct then you can do some plant pots. You just get a, a plant pot and put a plant in it. That's all you do. Pretend it's a house plant. Put it in your porch. There's something called vertical planting as well. And I'll tell you what, we have to mount a series of training exercises for you all, and we will segment them. There'll be beekeeping. There'll be how to make queens and bees, how to make royal jelly, and the full works. Uh, Brother Ivan Morris is the expert in that. I could vouch him. He is really good. And there are other expertise we have. I met one just now whom I know really, uh, Brother Charles from Tobago, 
I worked with him, training him in the area of Coco, but he's on with Mark, Mark Buckmeyer. And I'd like to meet with Buckmeyer and, and see how he can do some things for us as well. So there's something called vertical planting, where on one spot at the diameter of about 12 inches, you could have 15 plants growing in that wow. one spot. So that's something we will explore, Sister Charles, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Do we have another question? We have time for one or two more questions. All right. All right. So, Brother Granger, it seems that we have no more questions. Right now, we can take our closing remarks from our dear director, Pastor Nigel Walcott. Pastor, you can come in and give us our closing remarks. Then I'll do the vote of thanks. Pastor Nigel Walcott? Yes. Uh, sorry uh, about that, Candy. I was just trying to... I thought you were going to take some more questions. Um, oh, my. And so on. Okay. Um, so I wasn't um, altogether ready for okay. um, for this, this moment. But uh, since you're the host and you asked me to come on, I have to obey. Um, it really is good to... Um, you look ready. And you are always ready. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, the, the program this evening was an informative one. I'm sorry, yeah. but Ellis could not be uh, part of the whole exercise, um, of course, because of internet challenge. The, the uh, team that we have um, at the conference level is a dynamic team. Um, with various skills, um, and of course, led by uh, Brother Leon Granger, who is, uh, you know, who has the knowledge. Almost, I mean, I listen to Brother Granger talk, and uh, he has the the um, the nobility of of agriculture in almost all its forms, if not all its forms. And uh, you know, I really am happy. Uh, to have this gentleman as part of the team, um, you know, waiting with excitement um, to see our program really uh, take off. The pandemic has caused a lot of eyes to be opened. And if Seventh-day Adventists don't come to the place where we appreciate that we need to uh, come together mm -hmm. uh, to feed ourselves. Yeah to grow what we eat, mm -hmm. um, then really uh, this exercise would be, will be a, um, an exercise in futility. What we want to have happen. And it has always been my dream. Let me tell you something, Sister Kandy. I've been to the United States. I normally go every year. I couldn't go yeah. last year. And this year, can't go this year because of pandemic <laughs> reasons. Uh, but I normally like to, to take off on vacation um, when I go to the United States of America, I often observe the Jews and how they operate. Now, God's people are, are not void of wisdom. We can go to the Bible for almost everything that we want, that, that is pertinent right. to life. And God promises people, we are spiritual Israel. God yes. promises people that he's going to bless them. You know, he's going to bless their barns. He's going to bless the fruit of the womb. He's going to bless the fruit of the ground. And, 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 and God, God wants to bless us. You know, the problem is that we have not really been doing what God expects us to do. And I started off by telling you about the Jews in America. They work collaboratively. Jews don't buy from anyone else but Jews. So you know what happens? They, 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 they ha there's an internal economy that happens within the, the Jewish um, um, the Jewish nation. nation. Yeah. And uh, of course, we are spiritual Israel, right? And if we can Amen. come to the place where we understand that God is calling us 
to be unique, to be head and not the tail, to be unique, mm -hmm. to be different, and to work together. I think now is the time, Brother Granger, Sister Candy, Brother Ellis, Sister Carla, Rollox, Stevens. Now is the time. What a time God called us to work together. So, you know, it, it's amazing that God will call us together at this time, at this moment. At this time, yeah. Look, Brother Granger, yeah. I, Brother G Granger can't even give all the seeds that he has in his possession <laughs> because, uh, because you know, the huh. pandemic, we, we are locked down, right? Um, I'm waiting with anticipated, uh, you know, excitement for what will come of this project. And remember, the idea, the idea of the initiative, as I, as I close, the idea of the initiative is that we can feed ourselves, we can take care of the community, and I'm asking the moment that we, we kick things off for membership to remember, remember the pantry, don't forget the pantry. So bring the first fruits, whether it is in right. finances. Bring the first fruits. God promised, promised to bless you, right? Bring the finances, whether if you sell uh, what, uh, the first crop. The, all that money belongs to God. Bring it back to the church. Or you bring the first fruit itself to share. You know, um, and invest in the pantry. And I promise you, brethren, we are going to finish the work. That's the aim. In a blaze Amen. of glory. God bless you and thank you again, Sister uh, Braffitt, for for the invitation. Thank you very much, Pastor. You know, I'm I'm now seeing that we have a couple more questions, so we yes, will we take did. the questions. We got two more. <laughs> yes, we will take the questions, Sister Carla, and Fine, then I'll sure. do the questions. Sure. Let me tell you, the question there is coming from the question there is coming from Sister. Gabriel Andrews Durrell. She said, I'm an executive, an extension officer at MALF. Recently, the Minister of Agri promoted composting, but the jury spoke about waste products. Can Brother Leon talk a quick bit about composting? And also a question from Kareem Stewart. She's saying there should be an Adventist marketplace where we can get all our needs and support our committees. So what's happening where that is concerned? Hmm. Right, I'll, I'll shoot with the first one on composting. Sister Gabrielle yes. Durrell, good evening to yes. you. Yes, Sister Gabrielle Andrews Durrell, right? Um, good evening, Candy. <laughs> hi, hi. Nice to meet you. I was fortunate to have been sent to a composting course held by a lead scientist at the University of China. And it was a special type of composting called vermiculture. They, they had launched after that course something in the United States for the Olympics, where there was what is called a vermi bin. And let me just back up and tell you what is vermiculture. Vermiculture is the culture of earthworms. Earthworms are known to convert food waste in three days. You give them an apple today. Mm -hmm. You get vermi casts three days from now on Monday or Tuesday. And that's pure organic fertilizers to be used in your crops. That's the value of an earthworm in your soil. By the way, the amount of poisons we put in our soil kill the earthworms. So you lose some of the beneficial organisms, the microorganisms plus the earthworms. I am willing to do a vermi composting course with the members, particularly the pathfinders. I love the pathfinders because, you know, they have an interest. There's going to be a lot of continuity. They will get honors for it, and they could help their parents understand the system. What is a vermi bin? Just like you have a bin under your, your kitchen sink, there's a special bin that could be designed. Somebody could get employed to make them and sell them, and you put a few, a handful of worms in there, and every time you put mango skins and watermelon skins and bananas, they convert it to manure for you. They live off of that. If you want them to make babies, give them more mangoes. And they are, so if you want them to just grow, you give them veggies. 
and there's some things you never feed them. Onions, garlic, seasonings, and pepper that they don't like. They like to live in the dark, so under the kitchen sink, that's perfect place for them. And you will then have ready-made organic fertilizers for for your garden, for your and it doesn't smell by the way, it's totally odorless. They don't make noise while they work, they're very silent. Wow. Is that enough? But let me take a minute wow. again. Wow. I know that is so, so can if you Yes, I know that too. Excuse me. Um, I know what you said about the earth, what is true? Yes. Yes. Let me just say thanks. First, thanks to all of you for having me speak to you. I enjoyed it probably more than you did, but I hope you enjoyed it more than I did. I want to say thanks to the people who contributed the seeds. Southern Chemicals willingly gave me the seeds. I didn't ask. I went to buy. Um, Carson Chemicals contributed some seeds. And the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries contributed some seeds and plants, which are to be collected on the 24th of June. Okay. Um, hopefully we will get one or two participants from the executive sister candy to take a picture with the ps so we can put it up on our facebook page as soon as it's ready to be populated thanks again and just Thank as, just as was stated just as was stated as it relates to what's happening next i'm sure you all are excited to know what's happening i'm sure that you're excited to know to answer the question that was placed there, you know, Pastor Walker spoke as it relates to the, the pantry initiative. That may very well become our marketplace. That may very well become our hub where we can afford to go and barter and share and sell and do all the different things that's necessary, but it gives us an opportunity to support our own. And that is what we are about. Finally, we are in a place where we are ready, as someone said on YouTube. Finally, we are ready to support our own. Finally, we are ready to make it happen. And we need each and every one of you to do exactly that. I saw Brother Granger place this contact information in the chat. is not just there for show. Make sure and take his number. Make sure and contact him, Brother Ellis's number is also there. And we look forward to working along with our zonal spaces, our zonal teams or zonal areas that would give us the opportunity to truly connect with the people in this time. We are trying to be creative, but we will get it done. Sister Walcott asked if the worms would crawl Amen. out. Amen. Sister Carla? The worms will not crawl out from the bucket. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, they, Brother Green. They actually used it at the Olympics because they know the crowds at the Olympic Games, they would have been discarding a lot of sandwiches and veggies. So the deliberate place that was in China, all these bins in the Olympic Stadium, so people could put in their food and it's converted to artificial uh, manual, instant organic. Sister, Sister Candy, if I may? Yes, Pastor. Just uh, because then I want to wrap up, I just want to um, uh, emphasize a little bit on what Carla said. Um, mm -hmm. please look out for our Facebook um, page. Yes. It, it, will be, it will be launched um, momentarily. Uh, look out for yes. it. Of course, it's, it will be the, the departmental. So, um, you know, a lot of stuff will be placed. There. A lot of the information that you'd want, young people would want, um, yes. they can go there um, to get that information. Thank you, Candy. I wouldn't say anything else. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. And you know what, Pastor Walker? I'm so excited. I am super excited about this community services agriculture group. And uh, you all are getting me more and more and more and more and more and more excited, Carla. And you know, I admire Carla and her enthusiastic way. She's a woman and she's heavily involved in agriculture, is a business, and it's part time though, but she's excited about it. And you know, mm -hmm. it, it's really exciting me. It's exciting me a lot, Pastor Walcott. You know, <laughs> um, I wanted to say this, this is the color. It's such a privilege to have your little fruits growing in your yard. I look at Most my children outside, and instead of eating <clears throat> snacks and corn curls and biscuits and wafers, chocolates, yes. you know what they eat? Yes. They go and pick the plums off the tree, the cayenne govers. When they, on yes. weekends, my son picked coconut. And for my Excellent. little baby, drink our own <laughs> coconut. And we yes. have the big dongs. 
And, you know, it's such a pleasure when we yeah. just, you know, I feel for this and we go and we eat it. Pastor Walker, I you remember st- that I owe you some my yes. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Sister Candy, the thing about it is this, right? As you, as you spoke about that, the very, place, the very first place I go to when I'm thinking of what I'm going to cook on any given day, it is to my garden. I go Praise to my half drums and there's kale there yeah. and we we there there's the, the, the cauliflower leaves we even saute it and I mean there's so many different things that you could do there's pak choy right there I love flowers as well but as my husband told me you can't eat mm. flowers color we have to we have to plant food so it's important yeah. to have these things there you know and we have something coming up on the fourth of July it's America's Independence but it will be the Liberation for the Agricultural Committee we have yeah. a program so can you tell us yeah. about it. <laughs> right. So our proposed date for our next consultation for all of you all that is connected and all of your other loved ones is the 4th of July. It's the proposed date. We are praying, but most likely that's the date we'll be using for our next stakeholder consultation. But stay tuned. We will send all our flyers out. We'll communicate with you. Our page definite would, definitely would be launched before that. So all the information you would get. We are looking forward to hearing from you. Please, and you know what? If you have no means of communicating to Sister Carla and I, because we have the soft hearts, we are the ladies in the group. <laughs> so if you ask us for the plants, you surely would get the plants, right? I saw Princess and sent the number. <laughs> you don't want me at Sister Watkins, born and I, would ensure that you all get the plants. But remember, you can go to the and community Rollox center. Well, right? That's right. And Sister Rollox. We have three ladies on our groups. So don't worry. These guys are they're serious, but the ladies, we are soft-hearted. Okay? I, I'm really, really, really happy about this evening. I think this evening was a success, Sister Carla. And I would, um, I would like to invite the panelists to give yeah. a 30-second closing statement. Each panelist, please give a 30-second closing statement. Who are you starting with? You could, I will start with you, Sister Carla. All right, as you said, ladies, please. Friends, we Definitely. are here and we are here to see. It's time to get going. This initiative needs you in order for it to be successful. So will you partner with us and let's get planting? Wow. Amen. Next, I will have Brother Diri Atta followed by Brother Leon Granger. Hi again, everyone. Uh, I just want to use this time to endorse the Pantry Project. I think it's a very great initiative. And uh, as we roll it out from the department, I think we would be grateful for you all to get involved and make this a success. It can only be successful with you. Okay, Amen. I thank just, you. Sorry. Thank sorry. you, Brother Arthur. Yeah, I... I'm always ready to go. Um, I just want to say something. You would find that we'd be asking for training courses, and sometimes the materials are not always readily available. I want to appeal, if anybody have mangoes, even if you suck the mango seed dry, keep the seeds, please. Then place it in a little pot, let it germinate. I'll tell you why. We will run a course on budding and grafting. You'll need real seedlings to do that with. And then people say, well, I don't have any seedlings. And so I'll plant one. Mango not in season. So if you have mangoes now, even if it's old mangoes you get under the tree, take the seeds, plant them, because practice is important. The surgery you're performing on the plants. That's just my suggestion, but I want to widen it by saying if you have any kinds of seeds, we are asking, even if it's 10 seeds you have, let's... You could mail it to me, you know, mail it to Sister Candy. We'll get it. Ten seeds will go in an envelope and you can mail it. And we'll collect the seeds and help people who want to plant. Thanks very much. I enjoy this program. I could see it. I see the seeds sprouting everywhere. Let's grow some food for the pantry. (laughs) Amen. Amen. Thanks, Brother Granger. All right. So, you know, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. It was a pleasure being a part of this program with you today. And I would start with thanking the pastor and the members of the Pioneer Seventh-day Adventist Church for hosting our community services 
our community services agriculture steering committee today, Pastor Ian Morris, I would like to say thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Then we, I'd like to move on to all of our wonderful panelists. Sister Carla Watkins Brown, who also assisted in hosting the first half, the first part of the program. Thank you, Sister Carla. She's also one of um, our members of the Agriculture Steering Committee. Brother Samuel Ellis, I thank you. You were not able to get in because of technical difficulties, but we thank you. He's a very active member of our Agriculture Steering Committee. Brother Jury Atta, we thank you. He's a member of TAXA, Trinidad Adventist Community Services. He also did our beautiful flyer. He's a technical guy. Brother Arthur, thank you very much for your time. And also Brother Leon Granger. He's the chairman of the Agriculture Steering Committee and he was our presenter today. Brother Leon, thank you very much. Yeah. And thanks for the enlightening information today to all of our panelists. And thank you to our TAXA officers that are present and who are also members of the Agriculture Steering Committee. Brother Keith Stevens, I thank you for the opening prayer. He is the vice president of TAXA. Brother Brian Jones, he is the chairman of the pantry committee. The pantry committee we keep referring to, Brother Brian Jones, he's very experienced in pantry work. He is the chairman of the Love Until Foundation and he is a member of our agriculture steering committee. We thank you, Brother Jones, for all of your insights. And Sister Shelly Ann Rollox, She's a member of the, of the Agriculture Committee, and she's also the PRO of Trinidad Adventist Community Services Association. She'll be doing our closing prayer also. I thank you, Sister Shelley and Rollox. Also, thanks to our personal ministries and community services advisory for sharing all the information. They promoted this on their group. And I know there are many persons on. I know that our president of the Personal Ministries Association, Brother Clyde Joseph, is on. Good evening, Brother Joseph, and welcome. I know the secretary is on, Sister Faye Nickham, because she messaged me privately. I know she's on. Good evening, Sister Faye, and welcome. So we work together, personal ministries and community services. We work together to finish this work in the blaze of glory for Jesus. And thanks to our audience. Would we have a program if you were not there? I thank all of you for connecting. I thank you for your question. I thank you for being a good audience. You know, you listen, you took notes, you are very interested. All of you all, you are like, you're like very excited about planting, getting the seeds, getting all that was promised to you. I thank you for being here, for participating. And you know what? I'm happy. For all of us as God's children, Seventh-day Adventists, and you know, we are willing to include all of our neighbors and friends because this, this team is community services. I urge you to let us get this done. Let us get this, let us get growing because what we eat determines our health. And you know, the great Hippocrates said, let your food be your medicine and let your medicine be your food. We were advised and we got so much great information from our prophet. I pray that God really bless you as we move forward. And we are almost to the end of the Sabbath. I thank you for spending the end of the Sabbath with you. And my birthday, this was such an honor, Pastor Walcott, to share in this experience on my birthday. It's a very special birthday to me too. So I thank you all very much. And right now we will have our closing prayer by Sister Shelley and Rollox. May God bless you all really good. Let us pray. We thank you, O Lord, so much for such an exciting program. It has left all of us excited. It has left everyone on the edge of their seat, Lord. Without you, all this would not have been possible. Help us to get back there, God, to go in what we eat and eat what we do. So we ask your blessing on this initiative. We ask for your blessing, dear God, on each member. We ask your blessing, dear God, on each panel list that was here to give us advice on how to grow our food for better eating. 
We ask you, thy God, to bless the pantry initiative. We thank you, O oh God, just to bless us in a special way so we can get back to healthy eating and healthy living. Because we know we live in a time, dear God, where it seems that everything is to destroy us. So we thank you so much. And we hope that we have more programs like this in the future, more to help us, dear God, on this journey. So when that time comes, dear God, we will have bodies where we can present to you as a living sacrifice. So we thank you for our co-hosts. We thank you for the hosts. We thank you and we praise you because you are God. And there's no other God like you in all these. Bless us in a special way as we have closed off this Sabbath day in honor and thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And you know what? As you go, I, I, know, I just remember that I almost forgot our director. I thank you, Pastor Nigel Walcott. You are such a great leader. You are a good director. And I, I always say this, you are one of the best directors that we have, that we have to work with. I'm happy that you are here working with us. You are a pleasure to work with. It's easy to work with you and without you, without you giving us the guidance. All of our meetings, he's always present. And Sister Walcott, I must say hats out to you. Hands go out to you too, because you lend us your husband at every meeting. It's virtual though, you know he's home right there but you will always allow him to come into our meetings and share and guide us. And we thank you, Pastor Walcott. I thank you. And on behalf of Community Services in Trinidad and our Agriculture Steering Committee, we would like to thank you, Pastor Walcott, Pastor Ian Morris, and all of our participants and our audience. Thank you. May God bless you. Sister Carla, anything before we go? Just wishing everyone a blessed evening. And remember, it's time to get Growing. Amen. Amen. Okay, guys, see you. God bless.